السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح لنا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today inshallah we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam one of the mothers of the believers she is the, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Zainab bint Khuzayma and uh, she she was the she was in her 60s when sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got married to her so let's see who is our uh, mother of the believers sayyida zainab bint khuzayma so The good Muslim is the best person of living happily. Because he knows that whoever is around him, man, woman, uh, um, uh, he knows that people around him are his partners in good deeds are his partners in khair are his partners in in everything that would that would give people some uh, purity so whoever does good things good deeds and whoever likes to do good deeds continually then he would know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rewarded him in one way by making him continuously doing good deeds. And whoever lives by doing good deeds, he himself would feel that he, there is something deep inside him that would force him, that would push him, that would urge him of doing good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in so many, in so many ayahs in the Quran. And he mentioned that whoever does something good then this person will be rewarded. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهِ So the first thing, whoever does anything good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would know it. And of course, the same thing is for doing something bad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also know it. In Surah Al-Zanzala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرٍ يَرَهُ So whoever does an atom's weight of good, then he will see its reward. Today, inshallah, we will be talking about one of the mothers of the believers who, who was well known for doing good, who was well known for her generosity, who was well known for loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she was. Uh, considered or she was one of the mothers of the believers, one of the pearls of Islam. 
and she got the honor, she got the status of being a mother of the believers. And that happened when she got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this generous woman, this generous mother of the believers was and will always be called the mother of the needy, Ummul Masakin, the mother of the poor. And she was called so because she was well known for her being good to them, for doing good to those who are in need. Before, uh, before we talk about her, let's go back a little, uh, a little bit about, uh, to talk about her early life. Zainab bint Khuzayma radiyallahu anha was born in Mecca al-Mukarrama in Umm al-Qura. And she was born about in Mecca about um, 13 years before Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being revealed to. And when she, uh, when she was young, when she got young, uh, older, uh, Mecca was enlightened by the light of Islam. So she immediately uh, joined the first group of the pioneers to embrace, uh, embrace Islam. And uh, before, before marrying Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is said that uh, Zainab uh, was married to Abdufay ibn al-Harif and that was in Medina. So in uh, one of the narrations, uh, Abdurrahman narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, got married to Zainab bint Khuzayma al-Hilaliya, Umm al-Masakin. He got married to Zainab, the mother of the poor, the mother of the needy. And she was before that with Abdufayl ibn al-Harith. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to her in al Medina. In another narration, we, uh, we got the uh, uh, information that Zainab bintul Haritha wa, bintul Harith was uh, married to At-Tufayl ibn al-Harith. Sorry, Zainab bint Khuzayma was married to At-Tufayl ibn al-Harith. So At-Tufayl divorced her. And then she got married to his brother, Ubaid ibn al-Harith. And Ubaidah was killed in, he was murdered in uh, Uhud on the day of uh, Badr, sorry, on the day of the Battle of Badr. And he was a murderer during the battle. So later on, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got married to her after he married Hafsa Radiallahu Anha. So it was the third, the third year uh, uh, that we, uh, the third year of uh, uh, Betha, uh, of Hijra, sorry, of Hijra, and uh, the, uh, uh, there, there were a lot of companions, so many companions, was murdered and died. So it was the norm that Muslims would not leave the uh, widows without getting married. So they would get get uh, they would have uh, uh, they would get another wife and uh, uh, with her children to take care of them. So 
that will make it less uh, that will make it less of uh, uh, pressure and less of uh, a torture for them for, for losing the the, uh, the the sustainer of the house. So uh, one of the um, uh, people who uh, got uh, who lost their one of the wives who lost their uh, their uh, husband in the battle of Uhud. I want to correct this in the battle of Uhud. Uh, she was Zainab bint Khuzaym al Hilalia, and she was very saddened by that. She was so sad to lose her husband when she was in Al Madinah Al Munawwara. She had no, no one to support her, no, no one to provide for her except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, was so connected, her heart was so connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she knew that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something, he will give abundantly in return. And this is very important for us. So sometimes we, we lose something. Sometimes we lose uh, uh, a position. Sometimes we lose a husband. Sometimes we lose, we lose something valuable. So just be sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he takes something, he would give abundantly in return. She was very sure of that. And she accepted Allah's order. She accepted the qada and qadr she was put in, in. So the time when she was waiting after the death of her husband, there at the time, uh, for, for a month and 10 days, this time passed by. And Soon after, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam proposed to her. And that was the answer to her deep, deep belief, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deep acceptance to the, to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She knows that there will be some, some good khair out of it. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, became the one who would take care of her after having no one to take care of her. To support her after having no one to support her. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, uh, proposed for her and she accepted, uh, uh, of course, and her dowry was 400 dirham. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got uh, a, a room to be, to be built for her next to the uh, room of Aisha bin to Abi Bakr and Hafsa bin to Umar radiallahu anhum jameean. May Allah be pleased with them all. And with this, with this blessed marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Zainab bin Khuzayma radiallahu anha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the life of Zainab radiallahu anha. So she became one of the mothers of the believers. One of the mothers of the believers who were complete in religion, in, uh, 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 in generosity, in being good, in patience, she was one of the mothers of the believers. So uh, she was well known to be the mother of the poor, in, in addition that she was the mother of the believers. So her title, the mother of the poor, was, uh, was not new. 
it was a very old um uh, very old title that she uh, that she gained and she was she was known even before her before uh, uh, being a muslim before starting her islamic journey she was known to be an extreme generous woman and she was well known to be the one who always does good now let's stop for a second and have a, new, uh, a glance about doing good. When we do good, we feel, we ourselves feel good. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the chance, has given us the opportunity to help another person, whether uh, physically, whether emotionally, whether by money, whether by a word. So this is the, uh, uh, the status of doing good. We know that this good deed would touch the heart of the person. And every religion, Every culture values and rewards the performance of good deeds. Everyone, every religion, every culture would urge people to do good. And when they do good, they would value that good. So when, when you do good and you continue to do good, then this by itself is one of the biggest rewards of doing good, is to continue to do good. So it's not just a one-time one time, uh, uh, matter and that's it. No, when you do good, you feel that you wanna do more. That when you, when you make someone happy, you feel happiness, you feel deep happiness in your heart that, that will urge you to do more good deeds. And that will help you, that will urge you to, to, do, uh, to do more good things that would make people happier. And subhanAllah, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about being good to people and doing good to people. He talked about uh, uh, when someone relieves another person, when someone helps another person against one of the calamities of this dunya. So he says, صلى الله عليه وسلم من نفس عن مؤمن كربة من كرب الدنيا نفس الله عنه كربة من كرب يوم القيامة If anyone relieves a Muslim a Muslim believer from one of the hardships of this worldly life then Allah سبحانه وتعالى will relieve him on one of the hardships of the day after of the, on the day of resurrection, when everyone is scared, when everyone is does not know what's going on, when everyone says, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, then he will see the reward of what he did in his dunya. وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعَسِّرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And if anyone makes it easy for someone who is indebted to him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for him uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the hereafter. 
he helped someone. Someone asked you for money. They are they are in need, and they 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 got some money from you. Make it easy for them. If you feel at the time of paying back that they are still unable to pay it, just think of ways how you can help yourself before helping them. Because when you help them, when you forgive them, when you say, okay, either I'm going to give you another uh, due date to fulfill uh, paying back this, this debt, or you say, I'm, I am forgiving you for the sake of Allah. I don't want this money. For the sake of Allah. And you know that you did it just for the sake of Allah. And not so, so that people would say, this is a generous pe person. Your intention should be, should be pure for the sake of Allah. Because if it is not, then you will get your reward in dunya and not in, in the day after, in the akhirah. If you want people to say, oh, he is a generous people, then people will say it. And that will be your reward in this dunya. But you lose your reward of the akhirah. So your intention should be pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And if someone conceals the faults of a Muslim, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will conceal his faults in the, in, the, in, the, in the hereafter. He helped someone in this dunya. He, made, he, he covered his faults. He did not reveal him. If you know something about any, any person, do not reveal it. Say, this is not my business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take, to take care of that person. May Allah guide him, make dua, but do not expose anyone. Wallahu fi awmi al-abd, and this is the way how this beautiful hadith ends. Wallahu fi awmi al-abd. Allah helps his slave as long as he helps his brother. And this is how Zainab bint Khuzayma radiyallahu anha was. She was the most generous. She was, she loved the poor. She loved the needy. And she was so good to them. And as I mentioned, she was so even before Islam. In the pre-Islamic era, she was given that, that title. The mother of the poor. The mother of the people in need. So, uh, after, after becoming a Muslim, she increased her being good to, to the poor. She increased her being good to the, to the needy. And she would, she would see the people of, uh, the, uh, uh, of those who are next to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, the needy people of As-Suffa, Ahlu Suffa, and these are the, uh, still till today, these are called Al-Mujawirun. And Al-Mujawirun are the people who left their dunya just to be next to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the road. They are always in the road. And do you imagine that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would accept anyone if he is not pleased with him? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us. May Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be pleased with us. So, 
as I mentioned, those are the people of Ahlu Sufa. And uh, the, uh, the mother of the believer, Sayyida Zainab radiallahu anha, she was, she, she was so big hearted that she would take care of anyone. She would help anyone who is in need. And she was known for that. So when Zainab radiallahu anha was married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she didn't have in mind to be a competitor to his previous wives. So she didn't have in mind to compete with Aisha radiallahu anha, with Hafsa radiallahu anha. No, she did not want that. And that's why Aisha and Hafsa radiallahu anhuma knew what's her intention. So they had no jealousy feelings towards, towards Zainab radiallahu anha. So they knew that when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Zainab bint Huzayma, he married her out of mercy. He married her to take care of her. So she is not a competitor to them. She did not came just to compete with them. So Zainab radiallahu anha was, as I mentioned, just very well known for for being good to uh, to to the uh, uh, orphans. She was very good to the people in need. And we have to stop here for a second. We just mentioned the orphans, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. خير البيوت بيت فيه يتيم يكرم. The best of the houses, the best of the houses, is the house where there is an orphan who is being well taken care of. And we have a lot of these orphans in this in this society. We we often hear that oh the the uh, uh, the, the the father was uh, uh, the father died and left a few uh, few uh, children and then uh, the same thing or the mother died and she left a, a few children behind. So we have orphans. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urged us to be good to the orphans. So he wanted, and there, were, there are so many, so many narrations, so many hadith that would show how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urged Muslims to be good to the orphans. In one of these narrations, he said, My uh, self and the one who takes care of the orphan is like this. And he pointed together, he put together his uh, two fingers together next to each other to show that the two became one. So, Sayyida Um Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha was uh, known for being good to the orphans, for being good to the needy, for being good to the poor. And, uh, uh, she 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 was she she lived with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
with the mothers of the believers, she lived for a very short time. So uh, it was only uh, just a few years that she lived with them. And Zainab radiallahu anha got into the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a calm way, in uh, the silence of those who worship, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in, uh, in a way that shows the purity, in a way that shows the, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she was uh, one of the mothers of the believers who did not stay long with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She passed away during his life. And she was buried in Jannatul Baqiyah next to those great people, great companions who preceded her and who left this world just to be buried in this Jannah of, of dunya. So the, the, the death of Zainab radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, uh, reminded uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of the death of Khadija radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, his wife, his first wife, whom he had great love to, his first wife who supported him when he needed support. She supported him emotionally. She supported him financially. She, she helped him in all and every possible way. And she was the mother of his children. So the death of Zainab radiallahu anha just opened again the, uh, the memory of the life of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. And of course, she was always with him, but that was a special way of remembering her. So Zainab radiallahu anha uh, died and she did not narrate any of the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We saw how Aisha radiallahu anha narrated so many ahadith, and we saw that um, Hafsa radiallahu anha narrated so many hadith also. But Zainab radiallahu anha did not narrate any of the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is uh, no narration that there is any anything, any chain that was linked to her, radiallahu anha. So she, she was caring about one thing. She was caring about just being good to people. Just being good to those who need who need help. And uh, also uh, that was one of the reasons that she was caring of, uh, about the needy. And the other reason is that she just lived for a very short time with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why, that was another reason why she did not narrate anything, any of the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So uh, the mother of the believers, Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha, uh, passed away in uh, Rabi'u al-Thani, Rabi'u al-Akhir, and that was during the fourth year of the Hijrah. And she was buried, as we just mentioned, in Jannatul Baqir in Al Madina Al Munawwar. And uh, uh, Subhanallah, uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, Sahaba, uh, one of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, asked Abdullah ibn Jafar radiyallahu an. He said to him, who went down in her grave? And Abdullah said, three brothers of her. So uh, they, they went down and they uh, got her into her grave. So uh, with this, Zainab radiallahu anha was the first of the woman of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first of his wives to die in al Madina, While Khadija radiallahu anha died in Mecca and she was buried in Al-Hajun. So whenever you go visit Mecca, just visit Ummu al-Mu'mineen Khadija radiallahu anha. And when you visit, when you go visit al Madina, just also remember and visit those people who were uh, uh, who were buried in Jannatul Baqiyah, and um, uh, those uh, this amazing, beautiful uh, Jannatul Baqiyah uh, is blessed because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his face is toward uh, uh, his his eyes his care his love was to them and he would visit them he would visit those companions those mothers of the believers uh, his daughters he would visit everyone in jannatul baqiya so just uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَجْزِي الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَةِ And that was in Surah Al-Najm, in Ayah 31st. Then, which, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward those who do good with something better. So, our lesson today is to be good. Our lesson today is to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if there is a calamity that happens to you, if, there, if you pass through a hardship, then always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just testing you. What are you going to do with this hardship that you passed with? We all pass through so many hardships. Lust of loved ones, the loss, uh, the loss of uh, money, the loss of people around us, the loss of wealth. So what's going to happen? How are you going to react when something like this happens? How? Are you going to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees to you? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man radiya falahu rida. Whoever accepts, then he will be highly rewarded. Waman sakhita fa'alayhi sakha. And whoever, uh, whoever uh, does not accept Allah's qadar, Allah's order, then he will be punished. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was passing by, 
a woman who lost her child. She was crying and crying, crying in uh, on on his grave, and she didn't she didn't see Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She didn't know that the person behind her was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Take it easy, woman," and she said. Just leave me. You don't have the same hardship you, you, that, that I'm suffering from. And she kept on crying and weeping. And uh, then later on, they told her that, what did you say to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He was advising you and you did not accept his advice? She ran immediately to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, Lam A'rifk, I did not know you. I did not recognize you that you were behind me. What was his answer? Innama sabru inda sadmati al-ula. Practicing patience. It happens at the beginning when you have the calamity. This is when you should practice patience. So whenever you are in need of something, just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be one of those people who, who accept Allah's order. And this is what happened to Zainab radiallahu anha when she lost her husband. She had a deep feeling inside that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting her patience and he will highly reward her. And she knows that she, that when someone is good to people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be good to him. She was sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace something for her, will have uh, the best reward in dunya and the best reward in akhirah. She did not expect that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would marry her, but she had that honor. She had the honor of being one of the pearls of Islam, one of the uh, pearls necklace of Islam. So this was uh, the story, this was uh, something about a Sayyida Zainab radiallahu anha, Zainab bint Khuzayma. Radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, may Allah highly reward her, may Allah highly reward all the mothers of the believers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us with them under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So with this, inshallah, and until next week, I will leave you by sending us special greeting and the best salams to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until next week, I will inshallah uh, uh, do, uh, we'll, we'll have another preparation for another um, uh, uh, pearl of Islam for another wife's another one of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.